All right, I think we had a, uh, a problem we were working on. We didn't, uh, we didn't get too much more than just the setup of it, did we? With this, uh, that big wall with, uh, uh, for some reason. We don't question why we do these things. We just do it. For some reason, there was a, a bucket lifted out in front of this. We don't care why. We, we trust that there's a good reason. And, and uh, it's, it's like a lot of things. It's better not to ask too many questions. And so at, uh, I think it was split 8 and 12 or 8 and 10? 8 and 10. And it was 12 high, that wall, because uh, those are the places where Where, it, uh, where everything was set up. That's the... So that distance is 1.2 meters, right? And then two meters above that was the bucket in question. The, the bucket du jour. And then that was held by two cables and a force that we needed to find. Right? That's the picture you had? No? And that's all the farther we got is just setting the picture up. I think we really didn't do too much more. Oh, we did. We did. We did do some more. We labeled the points. Okay. You also said you wanted to find the forces that you didn't see. Yeah, you want to find find the forces in the two cables and the force P required. So now uh, P, we just need the magnitude. The direction's obvious, but the other two we're going to need as uh, as uh, vectors, and I believe I call them F B and F C. Because there's one in each cable. Oh, and the, the bucket was 200 kilograms. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The question came whether or not it's my, my what is Nana in the bucket. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Sorry, Nana. Just kidding. What? <laughs> I'll tell her you said so. I'll tell her you sent your daughters. All right. So, what do we do? Free, well, sure can. We can draw a free body diagram of anything we want. Uh, but why? And you'll get some points for doing that, but if you don't do anything else, you won't get all the points. Yeah, you want to sum the forces and sum the moments such that they're zero. Uh, didn't specifically say that the bucket was in equilibrium, but in this class, you can darn well assume it is. All right. So, uh, um, free body diagram of BJ said the bucket. Makes sense? Yeah, all three forces we're looking for are right there, so we might as well. It might not be sufficient to finish the problem. But it might be, and so it's as, as good a place to any, as any to start. So just take a little care to sketch them in as best you can. Remember, it's very easy to convince yourself there's some particular solutions in a drawing uh, that may or may not be borne out by the equations themselves. The drawing is just an aid. So there's the, there's the force we're looking for put it about the same angle so things look fairly similar. What else? <clears throat> the whole business with these free body diagrams, remember, is if you don't get all the forces, you're doing a different problem. And you can go get that graded by a different professor. I'm not doing it. Of course, that'll be straight down, we assume. We assume this is on Earth. I haven't actually said so. 
We'll make that assumption. It is a bucket. It is a bucket. Yeah, if you've ever shopped for a bucket on another planet, forget it. You're not going to find one. They're just not there. <laughs> what else? The the BNC cables. Of course, we got the tension, and it lies in the direction of the cables. So, um, as best we can do, draw those. And you know those to be tension. So, in fact, and this is one of the one of the, the, the delightful cases where we actually know the direction of all of them. They can't be doing anything else but pulling in those directions. And certainly has the possibility of, of equilibrium. Uh, well, we only have equilibrium in this class, but at least the drawing gives you the hint, I guess, that nothing's missing. If we had a no positive equilibrium with the drawing, then you know you're not done with the drawing yet. You're not ready to sum the forces. Okay. Keep going. Now what? Find the components of the forces. Well, now you, yeah, you, know, you start solving for the equilibrium condition and in the component directions is as easy as anything. Um, <clears throat> P and W are going to be easy. So we need to do a little work to even get the forces F, C, and F, B first. So you guys do that. We can't solve for the component directions if we don't know the components of FC and FB. So how do you do that? How many unknowns do we have? Somewhere between three and nine. <laughs> Nine's a little worrisome because we have three equations and then a three full three problem. How many unknowns do we have? What three? So the the magnitudes are unknown. We're only looking for the magnitude of P because we already know its direction. You know, offhand, we don't know the directions either. So I guess it's five. That's unknown, and the direction and magnitude of those is unknown. So whatever it takes to find those things. How do we find the direction of? Uh, of uh, B and uh, B and C. I propose that everybody's busy. You know how to find the directions of B and C? Since these forces lie right along the cables, and the cables are established purely by the geometry of the problem, you're going to have to use the geometry of the problem to find those. We're looking for the magnitude, and that magnitude times the direction, and we'll use the unit vector going in the same direction, so this would be from A to B. So we'll put, put A, B down there to remind us it's from A to B. Now how do we find that? The magnitude we're still looking for. That's going to have to come out from the sum of the forces. There's no other way we'll get the magnitude. 
But how do we get the direction? How do we get that unit vector from A to B? Everybody's got it? Good. You can bet you're going to have to come up with an unknown unit vector on Wednesday. Wow, it's looking at these notes for it. We did it. I would never leave you without all the tools you need. so quiet. So, 
we'll need that vector a b and the easiest thing to do is, is pay attention to where it is to where it goes in each of the three component directions for example in the x direction we know it's 1.2 meters out in front and it goes back to the wall which is at x equals zero so that's a minus 1.2 meters ah and I'll put the meters on the end there. So you're okay with that one? Mm -hmm. All right. So then we'll do the y direction. We're two meters up in the y direction, but we finish 12 meters up. So that's a 10, a plus 10 j. And then what's the z direction change from a to b? Yeah, we're right out in front, which puts us right on the y-axis. Then we move down the 8 meters in the plus z direction. So there's the AB vector, and that's actually what we've put in here, and then divided by the magnitude of AB. Yeah, that worked? Check with anybody? Of course not. No. Not in speaking terms with anybody, yeah, except me. <laughs> you only know, speak to me because you feel like you have to. My calculator agrees. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, wow. Well. Wrong. That's not wrong. I don't know. I couldn't do this problem. It's too hard. That's why I give it to you. Uh, careful about writing this way because when you get in the pressure and you might not know you know you might pick the wrong one out of that because it's not right by the J just saying that's my experience plus that's a much more non-conventional that's a math notation not an engineer let's get some real work done notation <laughs> did you have you understand it? at the end I did yeah. okay yeah you got to remember all the math you ever learned was from people who don't actually do anything. And that's on tape. No, back then, everybody everybody was a mathematician and a physicist, and the whole thing was called natural philosophy and an engineer. It's only, it's only when the things started to split off in later years. So we also need the magnitude. Oh, no. I got for this was 10.4, and this one I think is 12.9. That's 12.9, uh, right? Yep. And so then the unit vector becomes. One minus 1.2 divided by 12.9, 10 divided by 12.9, just doing this. And remember, the unit vector can't have any components of it over one then it would be longer than a unit, and it doesn't actually have any units, and they should work out. So when you put those last little pieces together, we have minus 0933. <coughs> Sound about right? 0.78. And then in the K direction, 622 plus 0 0.622 K. And that's the, that's the unit vector. And the units work out because we had meters above and meters below, so they cancel. You can take that and check what its magnitude is. Its magnitude should be 1, maybe a little bit of round off, but that's not a big deal. And now we've got then what we can put in for the FB vector, which is 
now just that unit vector. Right? And then you do the same thing for the C vector, and then you can start summing up all the X, Y, Z components. So, I'm going to squeeze that one in there. We don't know the magnitude. And the unit vector for it is, uh, my, and don't forget, you can check from the picture if the minus signs are right. you got to get those just right. Minus 0, 8, 4, 5. Give or take a little bit. 705. I said give or take a little bit. And minus 705. Yes. Right? And there's the two vectors. Be real careful with that. It's very easy to drop on a decimal place or a minus sign or something, and then you change the entire problem. Well, Miss Smith, I think you're right here. Sounds like. Why? I think it's the, <laughs> I think it's Homeland Security from evidently a, a blimp was hijacked. Okay, those vectors you guys got, at least the unit vectors. We don't know the magnitudes. We're looking for that, and that's part of it. But. We've got the direction now. So now there's only three unknowns, the magnitude of each of the three forces. And so we should be able then to do this problem with just the sum of the forces. So x direction, we have p in the plus direction. It must equal everything in the minus direction, which is the two components in the I direction of the two forces. So FB minus O93 and FC 0845023s uh, plus FC minus O. Actually, uh, what's wrong there with what I just wrote? This is in the x direction, so I just took the three x components, P is in the x direction, and I just took the x components of the two forces, but what's wrong there? And you have to be, the only way to catch it is just be paying attention to it. So you still have the negative sign? Yeah, remember I said uh, all the ones in the plus direction equal all the ones in the minus direction. Well, the minus sign put them in the minus direction, so when they're over there, they're already in the minus direction because then they're on that side of the equal sign. So you would have got, that would have given P as a negative force probably, and that couldn't be. There's no other way P could be in this, in this problem but positive. Okay, so there's one equation. All three unknowns, so all you can do is keep going until you get all three equations and no more unknowns. If any more unknowns come in, you need another equation. Uh, remember, we don't, ex uh, we don't count W as an unknown or as an equation because we have the mass, so just take it as known, W equals mg. So don't make a big deal about this. Come on, guys. That's all I'm saying. All right, so B, all the up forces, FB778, right? FC705, Those are those both up in the Y direction? Yeah. And that's got to equal the weight down So we'll put it over there on that side. That way we don't have any minus signs in the equation. That's all. It's just algebra. Uh, I forget.
Rooster got one? Where's Pete? Where's Pete? Doesn't have a Y component. No. P is right parallel along the X axis. It only has an X component. And that's why it's up there in its entirety. It's only an X vector. So that's also why I didn't put a vector sign over here. We already know it's magnitude. Okay, a little better. And all you can do is finish up in the Z direction. That'll give you three equations, three unknowns, and then uh, after that it's just an algebra problem. Let's see. Uh, one of these is point plus Z, one's point minus Z, so they got to equal each other. So Z. This one already? Uh, no. Okay. Because I thought it forgot the Y was parallel. So oh, okay. the problem was much harder to yes. <laughs> you, Yeah, you Alan sized it. <laughs> Alanized. Al Alanated it. Uh, 235 for P. It takes a couple minutes to solve them. That's not the point of what we're doing here. Uh, B is 1401. So make sure you can get those. It's just algebra after this. And C is 1236. Unless you're Alan, then there's something else entirely. Am I reading that right? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, well. Chris, all right? Make sense? BJ? Mm -hmm. You on track with that one, Dana? Okay. Trevor is angry at me. Me? I know, not you, Trevor. The unreasonable one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mr. Rex, as we have to call him. Okay, any questions about that one? Once we get down to here, all that's left is the labor of doing the algebra. But be careful, a lot of stuff can screw up. There shouldn't be any minus signs coming up in this one because we do know the directions of everything. We carefully, tried to carefully take care of it all. So it should be okay. All right, so you're crying for another problem. You're crying for a harder problem. You're crying for a more advanced problem. You say, come on, give us something that we need to handle. Okay, I will. And I'll leave this one to you. Okay, there's our coordinate system. Uh, in there we have a, a uh, oh, I meant to try to see if I could find a picture of this kind of thing. It's not uncommon to put up uh, uh, antennas of some kind that look something like this. They're very, very uh, narrow, of course. 
and usually made of a, a framework of you know just little girders and things all tied together and that's not the concern of what we're doing here the what I want to look at is is uh, the, the wires used to hold one there um, so that we can figure out the tension in the lines can also figure out uh, what kind of uh, attachment we need at the bottom and it's not uncommon with these kind of towers maybe you've seen it to actually have it like a ball joint in the, in the bottom gives it all a little bit more flexibility if it's actually welded down there and bolted in then it just has a little bit less flexibility especially in the wind uh, any place you get a lot of winds and these things are often put at the tops of ridges um, so they can uh, get the greatest reception so it's not uncommon to put a, a kind of a ball joint uh, attachment there so that's that's what ours happens to have so we've got an antenna put it right there along the y-axis you don't have to just to make things simple as we get going here <coughs> And then there's a couple wires to hold it. So uh, let's see. Always helps if we label the points. Just makes it a lot easier if we all use the same labeling. Okay, so the first wire out to C is at a point on the minus x axis back there at. Uh, uh, 50 meters. Oh, by the way, the, the tower is 70 tall. And so this first one's back there on the x-axis there at uh, 50 meters. The second one is out in front here a little bit. At a point there. that's something like 20 and 50 meters. So remember the origin, the axes, directions, all of that is arbitrary, so it just helps to be able to put one of the points on the uh, on one of the axes just makes things a little bit easier but it's not going to change any of the physics that's just something purely for our own convenience and then the last wire as you can imagine has to go back a little bit and it's at uh, a point That's about 40 by 40 out there. Okay, so that helped a little bit. See it all right? We're getting pretty good at these three dimensional ones. Dean is smart enough to bring a ruler, so is Mr. Raptor. So is Miss Smith. I mean, Ms. Smith. Pretty insulting here for a second. Fixed it. All right, so that's that's the problem. You're you're welcome. What else do we know? We've got the seventy feet. Uh, equal tension in each of the cables. That's pretty easy to set. Uh, you know when they put these things down, and the guy who handles the turnbuckles comes out, tightens them up. So we'll put in each one two kilonewtons. And we need to find the reaction at the ground. Now I need to make sure that, that that socket part of the ball and socket joint at the bottom is sufficiently stout. Got to make sure the concrete pad can hold all those, hold the, the bearing forces on that surface. Don't want to tighten these cables down and have the bottom shoot out. <laughs> Man, that would suck. Uh, 
that would be so embarrassing. You just go, ah, oh, jeepers, and you kind of slink away. Ah, jeepers. Ah, jeepers. I'm going home. I hate when that happens. So. I There's our town. So figure out the bearing forces, or the uh, reaction forces at the bottom. And the, the two kilonewtons, you know, you'd put that in one line, then you'd have to go tighten up another line, and that would change the tension in the first line, you have to go back. I know it's a massive Of course. This is an ACE hardware special <laughs> issue massless tower. Now, of course it's not massless. But its mass, its weight is significantly less than two kilonewtons. So it's not massless, but it's light. That is very light. Very light, light. yeah. It's, but sturdy because it can take the force in it. It's carbon nanotube <laughs> It might be. Was it Ace the other night uh, asking Earl first to make some keys? I have to keep changing my locks because students evidently get them. And uh, I was talking to him about the, <laughs> the blimp. <laughs> there was a blimp stolen. <laughs> Everybody's heard about it. I would love to hear about it. No. <laughs> Not often that a blimp gets hijacked. I know. I know, it's crafty. Must have been a really smart person. No, uh, yeah, must have been or a career criminal. <laughs> oh, the the TV blimp flew right over my house yesterday. <laughs> uh, so you assumed it was a student hunting down. I I offered. I said we'd become a customer if you come get me. Then I realized, uh oh, I don't know who's driving. <laughs> Especially since they they start to come down and then right at 301 feet they turn and go back up and then they come down 301 feet and then they turn and go back up. So we know that's where they broadcast from. No, well, that's the limits on a on a broadcast restraining order. Restraining order says three feet, 300 feet, 301 feet, 301 feet. Just in case there's a downdraft, we don't want to drift through to 299 and a half. I was very careful about that. So you admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't deny it at any point. I, I can stop the tape now. <laughs> <laughs> that is admissible in court because I don't have to read you your Miranda rights. I'm not I'm just on the victim. If I can if I can get evidence against you, all the better. All right, now this one you're going to need the uh, the unit vectors too. And then again, it's just a matter of adding them all up.
need a free body diagram. And so there's there's the tower with the three forces on it. We know the magnitude of each of those. We uh, we just don't happen to know uh, offhand the direction. And then there's three reaction forces and may or may not know which direction those go. One, certainly we do in the y direction one. It's got to go up. But the others you're just going to have to guess at, so might as well put them in the plus directions. And you need to find those three. So to do that, once again, you're going to need the, the three forces. You've got the magnitude, but you don't have the direction of the three forces. Uh, but you can find that out from the geometry of the unit vectors. You don't want to use the letter itself for the force because uh, we need those for the, the unit vectors. It can get confusing. We sure don't want that. Yeah, see, he can't do any work now because he has to keep his eye on you. He's nervous. He looks down at his paper, starts thinking, and then he goes, uh oh, I, I, I sense some pending doom. <laughs> trust, if anybody, yeah, Trevor, not that many people are there, Trevor, uh, because there's no sense going on if you don't have the unit vector right, it's pretty easy, you mess up just a little thing, mess up the little bit on the picture, Chemistry. I am good at chemistry. Wow. That's some serious chemistry. Is that 20 
I was, six I was certified years. to teach chemistry in uh, New York State high schools. Thank God I never had to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check them. Anybody got them? Might as well check them before you keep going. You don't want to Wait. screw them up. No. Don't put them up yet? No, I don't. No! <laughs> so, how about if I put one up? NBC. Get it? It's a broadcast tower. NBC uh, minus five eight one. Yeah. Minus eight one four. Uh, and that's K. Because it has no J component. Oh no no, it does. It has no uh, K component. Should be should be minus yeah minus in both directions because it comes down in the y goes out on minus x so both of those should be minus yeah is that what you got give or take a little bit Alan you hear that one yeah, that's exactly what exactly exactly now as soon as I can get permission. From little Miss Smith to do the next one. Yeah, you're allowed. Well, how about that? That can be quick. Two two seven. Oops, I. Remember, make your eyes and J's look different. I don't know why students don't do that. Just screw with me. It's minus seven nine three. Plus x, yeah, that makes sense. Minus y, of course, it's going down. Should be, should be plus z. Five, six, six. Again, all components less than one, or you've screwed something up. That one look okay, Alan? Bigger than these two. 
Doesn't it? No. No. <laughs> you put them over the magnitude, right? So you'd have uh, 40 over the magnitude for those two, and 70 over the magnitude for those, so that's almost oh, twice the size. I got it. Okay, I, I, didn't I answer, answer minus 70 over 90, instead of just negative 70 over 90. These things are not on the smart for me there. You got those? Okay. And then you know the magnitudes of each and each component direction, each reaction direction will uh, give you the equation. Okay, so it, it uh, yeah, shouldn't you don't even have to solve a bunch of equations, it should should just come right out. The only unknown in each of the component directions is the uh, unknown. Okay. Um, <laughs> what's so fun? Is that what I said? Yeah. What, should I be less profound? Uh, now, wait, here's, here's, here's the question for you to chew on until Friday. What if they decide to come back and they don't like this ball joint business here and they decide, let's go ahead and bolt it down. How's the problem change now? That's what you're. What do you need to think of? And how would you then solve that part of it? Do it a little form four feet up okay. in concrete. 